Alright, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. We'll be putting up a shorter version of this story on my other channel, which is BrainFlow TV. But this is the long version right here. So headline says that husband and wife, military doctors, gunned down on their front yard. Man, I can't tell you how much I take this one personal for a whole lot of reasons, given that I'm a veteran, etc., etc. But I will get more into that after I'm finished telling you what I have to say. So two suspects, the details of the case, two suspects have been apprehended in the killing of an active duty service member and his wife, both of whom were military physicians. Authorities announced this yesterday. My SoFlo TV audience, it's time to do another commercial again. This one is for my New York City people. And I'm talking about all five boroughs. Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Long and Staten Island. I'm talking to you. Are you tired of your floors, your wooden floors looking all torn up? Looking all dull and faded? Do you want that glamorous shine? Well, you need to call Mr. G. Now, Mr. G is located in Queens, New York. So if you're in Queens, New York... You're closer to him. But Mr. G also said that no job is too near or too far. No job is too big or too small. Okay, so he can handle the distance. He will travel to you. Garfield Scarlett is the CEO of this company. And his cell phone number and his office number are listed right here. Or let me just say them out loud for you. 718 525 Set two six four zero five zero eight five nine six zero eight six seven. His cell phone number is five zero eight five nine six zero eight six seven, and his office number is seven one eight five two five two six four zero. Or you can reach him at Garfield underscore Scarlet at yahoo.com. This brother has over 15 years in experience in installation, in sanding, in staining, in ratcheting, in finishing. He does it all when it comes to your floors. And get this, he has a free estimates available. So call Mr. G right now and get your floors right, right now. And tell him SoFlow TV sent you. Back to our scheduled program. The brutal double slaying Wednesday morning took the lives of Army Colonel David Edward McDaniel and his wife, Dr. Brenda McDaniel, in Fairfax County, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. This is what the Fairfax County Police said. Let me say this first of all. When I heard Virginia, I said to myself, uh, they are a mixed race couple, the woman being of African descent. And the man seems Asian slash European mixed, something in there, or probably even Hispanic. But they are a bi uh, interracial couple. And the first thing I thought was this was some racist BS that went on. Then I got to learn how wrong I was. So Edward McDaniel, he was 55 years old. He was still on active duty. And Brenda McDaniel, who was a bit older than her husband, she was 63 years old. She had already retired, right? The McDaniels were distinguished military veterans who were shot dead in cold blood right in front of their house. This is what the Fairfax County Chief Kevin Davis said at a news conference on Wednesday. Two people were inside the house at the time and survived uninjured. Ronnie Keandre Marshall, who was only 20 years old, and D'Angelo Strand, who was only 19 years old, both have been charged with two counts of second degree murder and two counts of use of firearm in commission of a felony. Now, Major Ed O'Carroll, the commander of the department's major crime bureau, said that Thursday evening in a news conference. The suspects actually work with a relative of the victims and the police believe 
that the motive was over a dispute that had gone bad. Davis said that authorities have not determined the specifics of the alleged dispute. Authorities had responded to the McDonald's home on Monday for a dispute. A prior call came in. Listen to this story right here. So they got a 911 call prior to this happening. Recent, in, within days before this happening, they got a 911 call. This happened on Monday, right? They were dead by Wednesday, I believe, and it was reported to the news on Thursday or they were dead on Thursday. So within two to three days, before all this happened, authorities had actually responded to the McDaniels home for a dispute and a burglary report. And the police said that they believe that Monday's response is directly connected to the killings. Police said that they believe that at least one of these two suspects, one of the two suspects were the victims, were victims, were at the victim's home, sorry, on Monday. The guns that they used to do the killing or the gun has not been recovered. So when that call came in on Monday, this is what happened. From other reports, this is what happened. They were in the house. They were upstairs. They locked themselves in a room with their son. Okay? They locked themselves in a room with their son. Their son is the relative who works with these two who are now accused of murdering them. There was a dispute. They came to the house to get their son and the mom and the dad, the two military personnel, they ran upstairs, locked themselves in a bedroom with their son, called 911 and said that there is somebody in their house. These guys were downstairs. It is believed that they actually made it into the house and were downstairs with guns as well. But they got away before police got there. Now, I don't know what kind of dispute this was, but the lady, she could have been heard saying, we're not going to let you harm him or we're not going to let you do anything to him. So she was protecting her kin, right? Bring him upstairs, lock him in a room and call the police. I don't know what kind of dispute, what are the details of the dispute, what they were fighting for before all this happened or what made them so mad that they felt like they needed to go to his home to kill him. Obviously, they had intentions of killing him, but because his parents stopped it on Monday and called the police, they let it lay low for a couple of days. They came back and decided this time to do a drive-by and they didn't care if they got the same person. You notice in the report, they said that there was there were two other people that were inside the house when the shooting happened. So husband and wife were outside of their home. We don't know if they were lured outside and they went outside again to talk to the people who these two guys who came before on Monday. We don't know if they went out there or if they were just out there watering the lawn, washing the car, pruning up the flowers, and these guys just appeared and shot them. We don't know if that's the case or if it was another case of them returning to the residence demanding to get to their son and they probably said, you stay inside. Let us go out there and talk to him. And they went out there and it turned deadly. Well, if you can't bring him out, then we won't give it to you. So hold this. Bow, bow and drove off either way both were shot and both died from a result of that here's the funny thing just in time just in time the state that they are in virginia virginia recently abolished the death penalty so a lot of people are angry as hell right now including me because see People who never served in the military will never understand what it means to serve in the military, especially to serve for a long time, to serve in time of peace, to serve in time of war, to be deployed into combat zones, to be away from home, ducking bullets and bombs, 
your life in danger, you're missing birthdays, you're missing every holiday that comes by, you are away from your fa family, in the foxhole, so to speak, they'll never understand that. And then to miss death in all those situations and then to come home where you think you would be the safest because this is what you fight to defend and protect, right? You think you would be the safest and you lose your life here at home on home soil at the hands of young men who are fresh out of their teens over stupidity. That hurts. So I'm sure there are a lot of people right now who are calling for the death penalty. I don't give a damn reinstate the death penalty. Matter of fact, take them to another state where firing squad is on the list of choices or options for the death penalty. You know, they have the injection and then they have the chair or the gas chamber. Put them in a firing squad lineup and let it rip is how I feel about it, right? It's a sad situation. It's a sad situation. My condolences goes out to the family. And I know for a fact that the military family section of the military they come from, because again, this is something that civilians will never understand unless you live this. The cohesion, the tightness of the relationship, the friendship, it is a life lasting friendship. Your military buddies usually are your buddies for life. So I am sure that there are more people hurting, hurting because of this stupidity. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. And you can also leave in the comment section if you heard any new developments in this story. We're going to stay close to the story because we want to see how it plays out. What exactly specifically was this dispute about? Why did these two honorable people have to die? And why did they have to die in this manner? What happened exactly? And we also want to know what are the charges that are going to be put on the table? Because right now they're talking about second degree murder. I'm thinking first degree more like it. So we're going to follow this through. We're going to see where it goes. And we'll let you know. Stay with us. We'll stay with you. Hit that subscribe button. So you are notified. Hit that bell next to the subscribe button. Every time we go live on YouTube. On this channel. Or every time we upload a new video. You will be alerted. I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out. Peace. I'm here for my bad place. Oh yeah. Trying to be a better me just for you. But it ain't easy. All right, my SoFlo TV audience, it's time to go lend your support again. Let me tell you the story behind this. So this is a 15-year-old songwriter, composer, producer, youth, artist, and this is his dream that he wants to pursue. And you know, I always tell my audience members, I say, wish good for others as much as you would wish good for yourself. Well, this is somebody's child. He's 15 years old, right? And I'm wishing good for him as much as I would wish good for my own child because I have a child that's a musician. If y'all follow my channel closely, you will know my artist who is T Viral. T Viral is young and he's doing a music thing and I understand the struggle and the journey to accomplish this. And I'm, I'm supporting him, so I'm supporting somebody else's child as well. Click the link in the description. Click the link pinned in the comment section and go give this youth a chance. His name is Easy the Name. DZ the Name. DZ the Name. DZ the Name. DZ the Name. Thank you in advance. Coming from a bad place, oh yeah. Trying to be a better me just for you. But it ain't easy, it's hard to get used to money.